New card. What do you think? Picked them up from the printers yesterday. Now that's a lovely color. What is it? That's bone. Oh, I do love a fresh pile of bones. And the lettering is something called Cillian Braille. Hmm, rather spiffing. But that's nothing, darling. Prehistoric pearl with a hint of Victorian lace printed with a vintage calligraphic type. <laughs> that is really super. How do nitwit like you get so tasteful? Well, I'm millions of years ahead of you pathetic humans. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. A tasteful thickness on it. Ah, ah, oh my ah, god. Ah, it even ah. has a watermark. Impressive. Pertinent. Oh my. You are sweating, Patrick. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And once again, I'm joined by a supremely talented YouTuber, Debbie Sana. How are you? Hello, everybody. I'm fine. Thank you for having me. First of all, I should ask, how are things in Italy? Because you're, uh, if you missed the last episode, you're, you are in Italy. How are things? That's right. Yeah, north of Italy. So the worst place you'd want to be right now. Um, yeah, it is a bit tricky at the moment, but we're, we're managing to get through it. Luckily, because of the first lockdown we did, now it's a sort of lockdown again. So, right. but luckily, we, we can still go to work and everything. Everything is open except for some areas. So. Perfect time to discuss some movies. Um, always a good time. Yeah, always a good time. Uh, oh, and by the way, guys, check out Debbie's channel. I'll leave a link in the description uh, because you do videos in English and in Italian. That's right. English, they're always the subtitles. I'm so jealous. I wish I could do that. Anyway, my Italian is schifo. for my audience know this. So no, anyway. no, no, va benissimo, va benissimo. <laughs> right, so uh, today we're going to discuss... Uh, now, I was thinking to base it off the, the, the title, The Dark Side of Rolex, because I spotted a kind of trend also to do with some of their marketing and how watches, specifically Rolex, has been cast. And I picked out three movies. So it was Die Hard, okay. American Psycho, and... Uh, what was the f oh Glenn Gary Glenn Ross right right how familiar are you with these movies well American Psycho I think was like the big one that we all used to watch when we were like teenagers uh, or depending on the age it was like the the thing that was going at the time because it was rather edgy whereas Glenn Gary Glenn Ross I actually watched that only quite recently so that's that's nice. one of the new things on my list Die Hard, I'd used to watch, I'd watched that years and years and years ago. A New York cop, John McLean, has come to see his wife. Instead, he's going to have to save her. Sit down. And then I only recently rewatched it because otherwise it was just like all this this thing in the back of my mind. I could kind of remember all the main scenes, but it wasn't. And then rewatching it. Like as an adult, you just, you know, you, you, you absorb so many things. Like even just Alan Rickman, who back at the time was just Professor Snape for me, obviously, right, from right, Harry right. Potter. Now he's like this completely other guy. He's yeah. an amazing villain. Because I am interested in the $640 million in negotiable bearer bonds that you have locked in your vault. Alan Rickman has often been described as the guy who could play the, a villain at best just right. because of how of how he is and his voice and this calm way, this menacing, calm voice of his. But I'm telling you, you're just going to have to kill me. Okay. I should start off by saying all three films have a kind of different way of using watches. The same brand, but different. For example, American Psycho, it's all about his facade of keeping up with appearances. And the watch is very much like this. You know, we, he starts with this routine and he literally, he's peeling his face off and doing that skin, uh, that crazy. I actually spoofed it. I spoofed it in a, in a Rolex right. video ages ago. I'll put a link for this side, that side. I can't remember. But um, so what, was, what were your first impressions? What did you like about the movie? Did you notice anything about the watch this time? Since... Our last video, I have been noticing more and more these details. I have been picking up, picking nice. them up more. Um, but in American Psycho, in general, I think it was all about this, 
as you were saying, the facade, so uh, the business cards and the reservation at the restaurant and it's yeah. all his, his appearance and the girlfriend and everything has to be perfect. Uh, but obviously it's just this thing he's building up or, or, or in front of his crazy personality. And that business card scene is is such a simple, simple scene um, in, in which he's going he's going insane over this this somebody else's business card, which is better than his. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's such a simple moment, but it really builds a lot about, you know, about his character. Absolutely, absolutely. There is a scene where he does mention the watch, where he's in bed with, uh, I'll put it politely, two ladies of the night, I think is the the most polite way I can say it. It's infamous, all watch guys know this scene. Don't touch the watch. She accidentally knocks his watch and he goes, don't touch the watch, you know, and it's like, he's so protective of this veneer of, of, and we we got to say it's, it's the kind of yuppie Wall Street thing it encapsulates that age this kind of it's a yuppie accessory it's it, it's supposed to be and we'll get into it with glenn gary glenn ross but it's it's like a, a power jewelry it's like success you know you're climbing the ladder it, it's worn in that kind of way um but he wears it as part of his disguise for people who would recognize that something like that in their group of people that's something immediately recognizable i, I guess yeah but who knows absolutely. what it is so he wouldn't pick he wouldn't he wouldn't pick anything different maybe i'm, I'm not an expert on watches but he would like he would prefer something that would be instantly recognizable and it would give him that status exactly exactly and this is getting really nerdy but uh, rolex has built a reputation of making very durable watches and part of that durability was the water resistance and it, it, it is a watch that you can jump in the pool it's like 100 meters water resistant kind of dressy smart watches weren't traditionally like this and it has got a really lustrous history i mean winston churchill was given one and all, right. all this kind of stuff i like to dissect girls did you know i'm utterly insane if you think about it as well if you are going to wash off blood and do diabolical things with chainsaws. It's practical. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's practical. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good choice. So did you rewatch it recently? I rewatched it maybe, when was it? I think it was about a year ago because I can remember around Christmas last year because there's also that, that Christmas scene when they're at a party and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I'd, and I'd rewatched it, but I haven't rewatched it recently. The ones I did rewatch recently were Die Hard and Glen Gary Glen Ro- nice, Ross. Nice. What did you make of uh, Christian Bale's performance? Oh, he's amazing. He's always been amazing. The thing about Christian Bale is that you kind of forget that he's acting. He's so immersed in in his characters that every single film he does, it's not Christian Bale, it's Patrick Bateman. It's whoever he's playing. You just completely forget about him. Maybe because, you know, in his personal life, he is a famous guy and everything, but he is still... Not in the spotlight for negative reasons. You, you mostly hear about him relating to his work, except for maybe uh, a few other things. And he, he really is. He just transforms himself, but not only physically, because the thing we always remember of Christian Bale, oh, he gained so much weight for this role and he lost so much weight for this other one. Mm. But it's not. It's, this, it's the details of his character. That's what I've always, I've always absolutely loved about him. You know, it's mm. easy to remember, oh, in The Machinist, he was so skinny and everything. But in The Machinist, you have to think about, you know, all the psychological, description of his character Mm, um so yeah yeah he was physically uh, absolutely he had to be tip-top condition i mean yeah uh, yeah it's crazy absolutely crazy um yeah i'm glad you mentioned that because i i forget i i i I it's difficult to like you say to remove him from that role i cannot imagine anybody and it was a book we should mention because i I can see lots of books behind you um yeah did you read it by any chance I haven't. No, no, no. Guilty. Okay. Well, I think you might enjoy it because uh, it's a lot. Well, like most adaptations, there's a lot more. It's a lot more violent. Um, I think it was a, a great adaptation in terms of making it because it's it's a dark comedy, and I think its reception at the time was a little bit critical. A little bit people didn't get it. I, I find it absolutely hilarious. Yeah, sometimes people don't want to accept or they don't want to show that something actually, they, that they actually enjoyed mm. it because showing that they enjoyed it might show that they might uh, not understand what's going on in his mind, but y- you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, I can see why he's doing that. And uh, it, it, some scenes were, I wouldn't say funny in a, like a hilarious way, but, but they, they were, you know, it was a fun movie. 
uh, creepy but fun. So. so let's talk about Die Hard because Die Hard actually has the same watch. I'm not 100% sure if it's the same particular reference, but it's a two-tone you know, gold and steel uh, um, Rolex date just again. You would have definitely noticed it because it plays part of the plot in Die Hard. But even at the beginning, like I, I remember in the office scene, that's when I yeah. picked it up and I was like, see, I've been paying more attention now to the watches nice, in film. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> Um, so, how was your experience now watching Die Hard and compared to before? Um, I think as a kid it was just like a big loud movie that, you know, you don't pick up all the, 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 the actual filmmaking of something. It's just, oh, a fun movie and there the guys are shooting and will the hero make it, that kind of experience. Yeah. And then re-watching it now, and, and I must say that, for example, when Alan Rickman, when he appears on the screen, I didn't immediately recognise him. I'm going to admit that, like, it was funny when he first turned up and I was like, no, wait, because I'd completely forgotten mm. that he was mm. in it, you know. I wanted this to be professional, efficient, adult, cooperative, not a lot to ask. Alas, your Mr. Takagi did not see it that way, so he won't be joining us for the rest of his life. His penchant for John Phillips of London suits, you know, he, he recognises the suits, Alan Rickman's character, he's kind of right. sophisticated and refined and, like, I just chewing the scenery, it was great. No, I really enjoyed it. And the thing is that Die Hard is one of those few examples of, of like action movies, if not one of the very few action movies that actually made it to film awards or stuff. It, it ended up at the Oscars, something which is very rare for, a, for an action movie, let alone for horrors. Horrors uh, uh, only recently have been making it to the awards just because everybody enjoyed it so yeah. much. Like it just, it was like such a well-rounded action movie and a lot of people enjoy it because the hero is, is kind of flawed. Like we kind of immediately, you know, associate Bruce Willis to this guy that's just going to always save the day. But Absolutely. Yeah. Throughout the film, you sometimes question: Is he? Is he going to make yeah. it? Yeah. It's kind of become the definitive action movie. Uh, it's it set up a lot of tropes that you see oh. uh, nowadays. John McTiernan, the director, he he did Predator, and it's really stood the test of time. And it's it's so. Oh yeah. Um, I don't want to say economical, but it's to the point, it's so lean and, and mean, um, not that um, uh, Bruce Willis is. I know what but, you mean. But yeah, it's as it filmmaking, it, it clips along, you never get bored. But even to see beyond just an actor, for example, Bruce Willis could have easily just been, uh, you know, cast as just your standard, uh, you know, how do you call it, like muscular guy who's yeah. just going to save the day but in reality he is a pretty good actor beyond just justice for the i remember like in the sixth sense which you know has become a bit of a meme and some people make fun of it but mm. it's a pretty good movie and there's oh, some yeah. scenes in which you know he really does convey emotions which you wouldn't expect after seeing him you know just shooting and and fighting his way through a, through a lot of films or you know 12 monkeys so yeah mm. yeah, yeah I, I really appreciate that they saw beyond that I'm glad you mentioned the watch at the beginning because I found this comment online. Uh, it's completely anonymous, but has a really interesting kind of uh, analysis of what the, the what the watch represents. Right, Harry Ellis, who is this kind of oleaginous, sniveling, yuppie kind of uh, social climbing, you know, typical of that era. I figure you're here to negotiate. Am I right? You're amazing. You figured this all out already. <laughs> hey, business is business. You use a gun, I use a fountain pen. What's the difference? Holly receives the watch from pretty much the worst guy in the movie who isn't a criminal mastermind. The whole reason he, he gives this watch to her because she's good at making money for the company. In a weird way, it's Harry Ellis's way of staking claim on Holly and her successes. And then we have the climactic scene where um, Hans Gruber, Alan Rickman, is uh, falling out the window. He grabs a hold of Holly and then, I, I can't remember if it was Holly or Bruce Willis, he lets go of the clasp of the watch and he falls to his death, right? So once Holly ditches the watch, uh, Gruber's gone for good and the plot to steal 640 million in bearer bonds goes with him. The movie that celebrates every man, not the Wall Street man, um, there's no way that a gold Rolex could survive the night. It rejects the symbolism of... Of, of, of the watch. Yeah, which, as we discussed earlier, is this kind of... 
the status symbol. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I just thought, wow, I didn't, I didn't think of it like that. You know, all this hidden meaning is crazy. In, in a simple, in a simple action movie, like yeah, with exactly. something you wouldn't expect. It's just, oh yeah, Bruce Willis, you know, fighting off the bad guys, and, and yeah. that's it. I, I definitely really enjoyed it. You know, as an adult compared to when I was just a kid, and it was just, you know, loud, loud, loud action, bad guys against good guys, right. and that's it. But I think that's the mark of a good film, to be able oh, yeah. to still have kind of highbrow concepts and, and, and ideas. Oh, absolutely. And then we have Glen Gary, Glen Ross, yeah. which I'm quite excited to hear what you, what you make of this, because this was your first time seeing it, right? Oh, yeah, it was. It was. And I was completely blown away, completely, because it was one of those films you always see on lists of best films and lists of films you have to see. But I don't know, maybe it was the title or something that didn't immediately attract me to it. I just I just never, never decided to watch it. And then when I watched, I was just like, now that is you know good script writing it's good it's good storytelling it's good acting within a really simple plot because what does it cover it's just like a, a, not how many days is it in total that, that, that yeah. it covers and it's just this group of people and their acting is absolutely superb and it just thrusts you into that in, into it because then when Alec Baldwin comes out and he's just speaking to this group of guys mm. you know just Whoa, wait a minute, but that's how he introduces you to the to the characters. Because only one thing counts in this life. Get them to sign on the line which is dotted. Well, it's adapted from a play, so it definitely retains that feeling. And it's right, quite right. intimate, uh, which is, I think, what you you probably felt. The complete antithesis of, of Die Hard. It's very that's right. focused. That's it's right. about conversations. It's like... But even exactly. in, in, in these conversations, it's explosive in its own way. Alec Baldwin, he does that, re he's, he's like berating, um, what's the actor? Ed Harris. Right, right, right. And he right. says, you see this watch? Oh, he, yeah, 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 the beginning. Yeah, 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 that's true, that's true, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the opening scene. But not, yeah. It's not exactly the opening one, but that's how he introduces him, yeah. You see this watch? Yeah. That watch costs more than your car. I made nine hundred seventy thousand dollars last year. How much you make? Which yeah. reminded me, I must say, a little of like the Wolf of Wall Street kind of situation. Yes. Film when he's like, "This is my wealth. This is where I am at. You are nobody because you're beyond beneath yeah. me, and you will never reach this. Or you could do it, but this is what you've got to do, and everything." And he's. He doesn't put it as if he's humiliating them. He's like saying, you know, I'm trying to push you to give the best, but it is kind of humiliating, you know, them just sitting there with this guy screen at them. This is my wealth and you're nowhere close to it. That kind of behavior, because it essentially it's like bullying. It does not, in oh, reality, yeah. it does not actually motivate. It, it, no, um, no. You know, if you've read any of these self-help books, I've, I've read a ton of them. Um, I, I immediately think of Dale Carnegie and um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's like... It's not the way. It's nicknamed the President's Watch because uh, Lyndon Johnson first wore one and a lot of leaders, you know, uh, Escobar, you know, it's, it's synonymous with gangsters and uh, right. Tony Sopranos and all these types. Subsequent presidents started wearing it, got the nickname. They only do it in solid precious metals, platinum, gold. Okay. Rolex are geniuses of marketing. They took that, the men who lead wear this and... You know, oh, right. It, okay. So, I see what you mean. Yeah. So then you got this Alec Baldwin who literally is with that watch, the poster boy for this, for this brash kind of get money, you know, don't yep. give a yep. F about anything. Always be closing, you know, this. this yeah, 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 yeah. It might motivate you on the short term. Like my guy might go out and say, yeah, you know what? I need to do this this weekend. I need to complete this. But it's not going to motivate you on the long term. It's just going to make you hate what you're doing. That That is bullying, humiliating, and it makes you jealous. That's, that's the only thing. It will make you jealous and then resentful and then you'll just give up. There's... That's the thing. What was your favourite thing about the movie? Oh, well, definitely the conversations, the acting. That that was just the best the best part of it all. And I've said this multiple times about films, is you can take the most simple concept and just put people in a room, but if you've got good acting, your attention is going to be kept for the whole, like, two hours or whatever it is of a film, even with the simplest setting. And, and, and that's what happens with this film. You don't have... You, mm. As you said, it's the opposite of Die Hard. You don't have, a, 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 you know... All, 
even the, for example, the scene when, uh, I can't remember the name of the character, but basically after he's bullied, being bullied, not Ed Harris, the other guy, after he's been bullied and everything, he leaves and he goes over to this, to the house of a potential customer and he tries oh, to Oh, Jack Lemon. And he tries to convince them. And then he, and he goes in and everything, you know, this guy's just kicking him out of the house and it's raining outside and you just see he just doesn't want to give up. But he, and that, that, it's just a simple scene. He goes in the house, sits on, on the couch, the guy kicks mm. him out, he goes out, that's it. But it was wonderful. Mm. Just the acting in that scene, you feel so sad for him and everything and the rain outside yeah. and yeah, so good, so good. I don't think there was any, I can't remember if there was any scene without rain. Um, no, I tried to think of outside the car scene. It was raining, and then they go over to like to the to the to the bar, and it's raining. Yeah, it's always yeah, yeah. It's always raining. Could be yeah, <laughs> could be a, mis yeah. <laughs> sad, <laughs> miserable world. <laughs> That's yeah, right. but I bet if you're Alec Baldwin, it's all su yeah, sunshine. Yeah, yes, it's perfect. And... His life's perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, interesting. What did you make of Al Pacino? Oh, he's great. He's great. And then yeah. I was thinking back at the time, he's always been great in those, you know, sort of aggressive roles and the, just a big role. He's never, he never has a, like a small role. It's always him, this big character, this big introduction to him. You stupid. <laughs> you, Williamson, I'm talking to you. You just cost me $6,000. $6,000. You <laughs> What are you going to do about it? Where did you learn your trade, you stupid you idiot? Who ever told you that you could work with men? I don't care whose nephew you are, who you know, who's sucking on, you're going out. I swear to you, help us not to us up. To help men who are going out there to try to earn a living. When he's sitting at the, at the bar and he's... And he and he gets this guy. He he gets this guy to, you know, talk to him and get him in his world with these really like bold, you know, controversial statements. Uh, so this mm. guy's intrigued by him before then he starts with the business. Yeah, he was definitely like on his way up. It's funny because I've just re recently rewatched Heat, uh, the Michael right, Mann yeah. film, which yeah, just that that I think that's like peak Pacino. It's like, right, right, right. Just kind of in closing about Glen Gary, Glen Ross. When I think of the bad, the the bad things of 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 Rolex and the brand, because it's it's a, it's such a instantly recognizable brand everywhere. Okay. Um, I I think these three movies really uh, kind of typify the the negative effects of that aspirational right, advertising. Right. Yeah. yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? I see. Yeah. Because like before, I I don't know. Obviously, I don't. I'm not knowledgeable about the watches in, uh, in you know the Wolf of Wall Street. But I remember there, it's all about the wealth and the fame. And even here in, in Glengarry Glen Ross, there's nothing like when he's shown the Rolex. You know what the history is of about. You know you you're knowledgeable about it. But somebody like me who would just see that and know, oh, it's just this thing you have to have, this status you have to have, you have to reach. This big lump of gold, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm glad you mentioned uh, Wolf of Wall Street because there was... I did a video on that, actually, and right. I, I even bought that watch because at the time, DiCaprio was a... And we talked about this, uh, was a... a Brand ambassador. An ambassador for... Okay. Yeah, for Tag um, Hoyer. And he flings the watch, right? Right. And he says, this solid gold watch. And I actually looked at, you know, I bought the same watch. It wasn't. It was gold plated. Right, right. He lies about the watch that he's throwing. But actually, I think it was deliberate because it un it showed the kind of the, the fakeness of it. It's a facade a bit. Yeah, it's a facade. The facade. Yeah, exactly. Was all this legal? Absolutely not. We were making more money than we knew what to do with. Is there anything you didn't didn't like about them? Um, that I didn't like, I don't think so. I'm just uh, ashamed that I've only seen some of these films so late, but that just happens, like, that I've seen them so right. much so later in life. But sometimes you do take in more details. Like, for example, I'm thinking if I'd seen, I don't know, Glen Garrigan Ross, maybe when I was a teenager, I might have lost a lot of things. I might have found it boring because maybe my mind wasn't ready to appreciate, you know, the details of filmmaking, if you see what I mean. Other films, like for example, American Psycho, you, 
I would have still enjoyed it. What did you think of the ending of, of American Psycho? What the, well, it is a bit ambiguous and everything. Uh, yeah, it is. And, and that's is. what a lot of people have even criticised because they want something like a definitive a definitive ending. But I, I didn't mind it, actually. I've, I've rewatched it plenty of times. And then I think it's one of those films where people just don't want to accept that they kind of really enjoyed it if you it's what we were saying before like can't kind of just admit that it was yeah. a good film like you don't i don't want to say it in case anybody hasn't seen it but like when he's returning the cassettes scene that just became like you're just like what <laughs> like you just wouldn't expect that to happen but i don't want to say it because of course you know uh, yeah spoilers <laughs> spoilers yeah, no, absolutely, guys, if you haven't seen it, Go watch it do definitely. check them out. Okay, well, thank you so much. I think that was really, it was great to have your your insight. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Don't forget to check out uh, Debbie's channel. I'll leave uh, the links down below, especially if you speak Italian as well. You're going to be in for a treat. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Take care. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Oh, and thoughts about these three movies. Which is your favorite uh, movie involving Rolex? Uh, maybe there are some examples or movies and watches that kind of subjects you'd like us to cover uh you, w would you be up for for t more watches and movies i'm always available I, i'm fine yeah and now the more i watch the more the more i notice it i'm like i know that i've seen that now and to pay more attention to it since i've met you so nice nice all right guys thank you very very much for watching and we will catch you in the next one okay ciao ciao